and also the main Belk Library and Information Commons website. Now you can use this website just as is, but if you look under services, you're gonna see a link to distance education. If you also look under um, services link up here, you're gonna see another link to distance education. And for those of you within the distance education program, there's a link to the library from the main distance education page. So there's a bunch of ways to get to this particular site. Now what this site is, is it's very specific to you and to the services that we offer, the resources that we have. The library website in itself is huge with lots of information, but what the distance education site has done is it narrows it down into really easy tabs to get directly to the information that you're looking for. And again, it also makes it very specific to the services that we offer to DE students and faculty. Now, Honestly, I don't see a difference between on-campus and DE students, and the librarians here don't as well. However, you do have specific services and resources that are just for you. For instance, um, one of the services I'll talk about is that we can mail articles and books to your house, as opposed to you having to drive up to Boone to get the items. Um, it's a great service that we offer, and we hope that you will completely take advantage of it, because it doesn't just include books and articles, but you can also purchase DVDs, um, or not purchase, but have DVD sent to you, and it's free. Basically what you do is you put in your request, and I'll show you how to do that, and then we mail everything to you with a prepaid envelope and box, and then once you're finished with it, you turn around and you send it back. So it's pretty awesome. So you know you're in the DE page when you see the picture of my hound dog. Um, so like I said, this is your chance to bookmark it, but there's also links to the Distance Education Program, the Writing Center, which is another amazing resource that is available to you, Smart Thinking, and the workshops. So I mentioned earlier that this will be archived and it will be put on this page. Uh, this is also um, a great thing for you guys to bookmark because we have lots of workshops in regards to citation tools, ebooks training, uh, resources for faculty. You can see some of the past searches or webinars that we've done, such as Google Scholar, using Google Library Research Basics. And we offer webinars and workshops, both face-to-face -face and online every month. So there's always the opportunity to attend one of these webinars, or you can just request a wrap session, which is a one-on-one -on -one working with a librarian about um, research needs that you have, and I'll go into some more detail about that as well. So definitely keep this page in mind because we try to offer them when they're most convenient to you because you have such crazy schedules being distance education students, so we try to kind of offer them at different times, but we always take suggestions. So if there is a workshop that you would really like to see that we don't have, such as maybe you just want a workshop that's specific to your department, let us know because we'll be happy to, to hook that up. So again, this is the main website. So as you can see, I've kind of put everything in tabs just to make it really easy for you just to get your information. So again, I mentioned that we can have books and media mailed to you. Now you can watch this very short, I promise, video on how to do that. And it's really simple. Um, if you guys are following along, what I would do is I would just go straight to the main page and I would type in any book or movie that you're looking for. So maybe you're a social work major, because I know a lot of the DE folks are. So type in the title of the book, the keyword of the book, whatever information that you're looking for in our app search. Okay, and what it's gonna do is it's gonna give you a list of everything that we have. What's really cool about our, our App search is that it will refine things for you. So if you are looking for just ebooks, or you're looking for a book, or video, or articles, you can click under the refine box right over here. If you're looking for specific languages or public dates or publishing dates, it's just a really cool way to kind of narrow down what you're looking for. But say for instance that you uh, see the social work book, you absolutely have to have it. It's really simple, you guys. What you do is you just click the requested button right here on the right hand side. So if you click on that, it will ask you for the following information. So you will wanna enter your username, which is the first half of your appstate.edu email, and whatever your appstate password is. So if you guys are used to the banner ID from last year, we don't do that anymore. So this is just the new way of entering. So you'll enter in that information, and it does take a while, so just give it a second to upload. 
this is the part where you hear crickets. Ah, here we go. Okay, so once it's loaded up, you're gonna see that it says this box is gonna appear on the right hand side. Because you guys are DE, you're gonna wanna click on this arrow and you're gonna choose ASU Distance Learning. This way we know automatically that we are going to mail this to whatever address you have on record in the registrar's office. So you click on that and then submit. If you have a specific deadline, put that in there. Um, but I will tell you, because it's being mailed, it takes anywhere from two to three days, uh, just depending on where it's being sent. If it's overseas, obviously that's gonna take longer. But uh, all you do is you click Submit and Done. So like I said, it's a really super easy way to get information sent to your house. And if you have any problems whatsoever, you can always email us at the library, contact us, and we can help you by walking you through the, the system. So again, that's how you can get the books and media mailed to you. But again, you can also check out our website where, like I said, short video, try not to make them too long because even I can only take about two minutes before I start to zone out. And again, that gives you more direction on how to do that. So we have thousands of books. Ebooks was another question. Um, Mary, we have a pretty easy way of accessing the ebooks. If you click on, click on this link, what this does is this will give you directions on how to access them. We do have over 90,000 ebooks that we subscribe to. And the thing about ebooks that are kind of interesting, especially within the academic world, is that we have to get them from different companies, and each company slash vendor has their own way of how you can download the ebooks. So if you get your ebooks from EBSCOhost, you can access it on your phone, on your iPad, on your desktop, but there is some step-by-step -step directions. Now you can contact a librarian at any time to walk you through. You can attend our ebooks website where we go into more detail, but say for instance, again, you are looking for books on social work. You can click on that ebook search and it will give you a list of everything that we have. Um, what's cool is that um, ebooks can be read on a Kindle app. Yes, George, but that depends on where you're getting the ebook from. Uh, if any of our books from Overdrive, which uh, is a database that we have that are specific to ebooks, will let you download it onto the Kindle. Um, but what's really cool is that they have created, um, and let me see if I can find that really quick. There's a really great ebook guide that tells you exactly which ones you can download on what. Um, John did like this seriously awesome chart. Let me see if I can find it. Oh, there it is. Okay, under ebook basics, and I'm gonna copy and paste this link to the chat box. But this tells you exactly what format you can download the books from. So if you get your books from EBSCOhost, yes, you can download it on Kindle. Ebrary, not so much. Um, the thing with that, you're kind of limited on Kindle. However, you can pretty much download them all onto your desktop, onto your iPad, but there are specific apps. Uh, unfortunately, it is not a fluid process. It is kind of tricky. So if it's your first time downloading eBooks, we highly recommend that you, you contact one of us and let us help you walk through it because it is different um, depending on where you get your eBooks from. However, what's really kind of cool is that you can open them directly on your desktop so what you would do is, if you don't want to download them onto your Kindle and you don't want to download them on your computer, when you find the perfect book, so say you are looking at the social workbook, just click, click on the connect to e-resource only and it will let you open it directly on your desktop. So you can kind of, it's kind of like when you go to the library, you take the book off your shelf, you're kind of flipping through it, you haven't quite checked it out yet, you're still debating whether or not you want it. That's what this is like, because you haven't officially checked it out. You can print up to um, specific pages out of the book. You can always get the citation out of the book. They provide you with a citation that you can copy and paste. So as you are doing your research, you can click the citation, choose which citation you need, copy and paste it, and put it into your works cited. It's like, I really like that when you're doing research because sometimes you just kind of forget about the citation till the end and when you're using the library website just about every page like whether you're getting articles or you're getting books there's going to be a citation tab it's either going to be at the top of the page or it's going to be at the right hand side sometimes it comes in the form of a blue button sometimes it's just a little word that says cite now but if you always look for that when you're using the library databases you're going to be able to get the citation but always double check it because sometimes the citations are not always correct. I would say they're 90% correct, but there's always margin for error because, hey, it's technology and we know that technology is not perfect. So that's how the basics of opening ebooks. But like I said, if you want to get more in depth, 
into ebooks, definitely come to the ebook webinar or ask a librarian. Um, you're going to find my contact information. You can always contact me. But under research help, and I'll go into more detail, um, it, we have lots of services where we can just meet with you one-on-one. -on -one. And guys, honestly, do not be scared to contact a librarian every semester because you guys are going to be taking classes where you might use specific resources and databases, and then you might take another class that has something completely different. And so each visit with a librarian, you're going to learn something new. It's a free service. We love talking to you guys. I mean, any chance to not be writing scholarly papers is good for me. So please don't hesitate to email and um, let me help you get through all of the cool stuff that we have. Same applies for articles. Uh, again, there's helpful videos on how to do searches, how to get articles mailed to you. Um, it's very similar to what we just did with the books. It's going to be the exact same system. However, if there are articles that you are looking for that we don't have access to, what you're going to want to do is you want to get an account with Interlibrary Loan. Now, you guys might be familiar with Interlibrary Loan. This is the best way to get copies of master thesis articles that you might find on Google that are absolutely perfect, but you click on it and it tells you for $45 they'll send you the PDF. Please don't do that. Do not spend money on your research. We can get those items for you. We have access to WorldCat, which literally gives us access to thousands of libraries in over 160 different countries. So if it's out there and we can get it, we can definitely get it. Um, Mary, good point. Yeah, sometimes the citations are incorrect. So just kind of keep that in mind as you are, are copying and pasting them in. But at least you kind of got the basic setup of how they should look. So if you're a first time user in Iliad, go ahead and click on this link and fill out and get yourself an account. Now, you don't have to do this today. But if you, like I said, are coming across in your research and the articles that you absolutely have to have or the books that you need or the thesis or dissertations that you need copies of that we don't have, this is how you would request those. And they can take anywhere from 24 hours to two weeks, depending on the item, because again, we are accessing this information from other libraries and we're kind of on their time schedule. But we're, it's, Diana is pretty amazing and she's pretty quick. And what's cool about the way that the login system works in is that once you've established an account, you can actually see where your requests are going. Like right now, I don't have any, but here's like a history of requests that I had. Um, so don't laugh, I do like reading some pretty amazing, awesome, nerdy books that I didn't get, you know, because I'm too cheap to buy them off Amazon. But as you can see, when you're looking at Iliad, it's not like you're going to put in your request and it disappears into the ozone of the internet and you never hear back from anybody. You can actually follow the process. So you can see exactly where, you, okay, so look, here's my request. Here's processing, processing, send. Oh, here it is. Okay, so you know, as long as you keep coming back and checking, you know exactly where your articles and your book requests are. So it's pretty awesome in that sense um, that you can kind of keep an eye on it because there's nothing more frustrating than putting in a request for something and then never hearing back from anybody. So that's really cool. And like I said, see it. Do not be frustrated if we don't have it because we can get it. And like I said, as long as you give us enough time, we can make sure that you have access to it. And again, this too is a free service. And as well, because you're distance education students, those books will be mailed to you. So that's pretty cool. Um, something that's also really interesting, which neat about distance education um, students, because I'm going to skip past e-reserves and go right to your libraries in your area. Because you are out state students, you are part of the UNC system. So you have access to all 17 libraries within the state. You can literally take your ID card and you can use their printing. You can use their computers. You can get some help, basic help questions from the librarians. So whether you live in Charlotte, Fayetteville, Wilmington, Raleigh, any one of those places, say you're going to Chapel Hill for the day and you decide, you know, I think I'm going to do some research on my paper. You can literally go to UNC libraries, show them your card and have access to their collection. So that is pretty cool. Um, also, though, if you don't have that kind of time, you can get items shipped from those institutions to you by using the interlibrary loan system that I just showed you. So you have the whole state of North Carolina, in fact, the whole world at your disposal when it comes to research. And you also have very cool librarians that will help you in getting that information as well. So don't think because you're DE students that, you know, you're missing out on everything. Um, Jennifer, if you don't have a, an ID card, talk to your advisor. Um, I know that a lot of DE students have that. They get registered 
Um, some are unable to attend the orientation where I know that they get their pictures taken. So go ahead and put in a request to your advisor to get your banner ID. Um, this way you have it. And if you ever come to Boone for the day, you can check out items with your banner ID. So you always have to have that ID card when you come to the library. So if you have not received one, please contact your advisor. But like I said, libraries in your area is kind of cool because we have uh, you have access to several of the community colleges. So if you live near Caldwell or Catawba Valley or Forsyth Technical, you can go into their library and get help. They are trained to help you. Um, they can help you access the databases that you can use their printing and, and you can use um, the services that they have there. But you also have access to the other libraries. So that's pretty cool. So like I said, definitely get that card if you don't already have it. And something too, just to note, is you're gonna see a chat box on just about every page of the library. I highly, highly recommend that if you need instant help, like right now, type in hello. Um, now this will this is like a test to see who's following. Um, but there are librarians that man the chat box during the hours that the library is open um, when we have professional librarians on staff. So the chat box is manned till 9 p.m. And then after that, it gets kicked in to NC Knows, which is a statewide chat. So you can always get questions answered. Yay, see, there they are. Um, in workshop testing. So yay, they're amazing. So you can always get kind of that instant gratification. I need to help right now. Um, Jennifer, what if I work for a state community college and have a faculty ID? That's a good question. Um, you know, I'll have to look into that because I do know if you're part of the UNC 17 school system, it works. But as far as Coastal Carolina Community College, I don't know. I would think that it would, but I'll, I'll definitely double check and, and get back. If you can email me that, I'll, I'll get right back to you. Um, and that's cool that you work there because we have a guy who used to work there. So email me. Um, Okay, so libraries in your areas, again, check out the chat boxes in every room. Here's that WorldCat box I was telling you about. This is where we have access to all of those different libraries in different countries. You can type in um, a search in there as well and get access, and you can put in your request through Iliad. So it's actually really cool because you can type in social work and say that you find that perfect dissertation. You, there's a box that you can click on where it automatically shoots you to your ASU Iliad page and you can put in the request and it filters everything in. So technology is awesome when it works. Um, so definitely try that. And again, if you've got any questions, don't hesitate to ask. Now e-reserves is pretty important because a lot of DE faculty do put their uh, articles and textbooks, chapters and things like that online, which is great for you because that's like less money you have to pay on resources. So you can do a search by instructor or course name and number. It will ask you to log in with your credentials like we did at first, and then you're able to download the articles that your professor put up. You might even be able to watch the streaming video that your professor put up, in addition to getting uh, access to the e-resources that your instructors might tell you about in your syllabus. So it's always good to check. Um, two, just a little thing, because I used to be a student, I'm not ashamed to admit this. Um, if you were to do an Iliad search, an interlibrary loan search for specific textbooks, sometimes you can find those and get those sent to you for free. So you don't even, you can borrow them, get the information you need, send them back, and then you don't have to pay for it. So, ooh, on the bookstores, I probably just got myself fired, but hey, they overcharge anyway. <laughs> but libraries are great for getting free information, and we're a lot more helpful too. Research help is probably going to be the button you want to go to the most. Now, there are a couple ways that you can get, several actually, different ways you can get help from the library. You can literally click get help, ask a librarian. This is all the different ways that you can, you can contact us. You can text us. You can call us. There's the ever-present chat box. You can come in person, or we can do webinars like we're doing right now. Um, those are actually really cool because I get a lot of DE students that are, can only talk to me during their lunch breaks. So, we schedule a wrap session virtually. I walk them through. They see my screen. I see their screen. It's kind of awesome. Um, so it's a quick, easy way to get help. And like I said, we love doing these. So again, you can get to get help quite a few different ways. But we have guides for research, and we have the wrap sessions. So the wrap sessions are, like I said, this is your one-on-one. -on -one, I need help. Um, like I said, have as many as you can um, with um, oh, okay, Ken, good point. Community colleges are not part of the borrowing agreement. Thank you, thank you. Yay, Ken, he works with me, and he's a reference nut. So, Jennifer, that answers your question. Um, however, once you get your Appalachian ID, you can use that. 
So keep that in mind. But the research advisory program is pretty amazing because like I said, use this more than once. Use this for every class because like I said, there are different resources very specific to classes that you might not even be aware of. So you might be like addicted to JSTOR, which is the most awesome database within your specific program. And then you take some crazed class that has nothing to do with your major and there's like all these other great resources you didn't even know about. So um, you can also use the wrap session if you're, you know, haven't, researched in years and years and you just want to know what's out there or maybe you learned something in this and you just want some more detail this is how you do it so just fill this out put in your preferred times and let me tell you the librarians here are super quick about responding so we can meet with you in person telephone web conferencing if you're all into the AET zone we can do that as well so this is how you would get that information and and don't be shy about using this more than once because like I said there's a lot of research and reference information out there, um, especially within the different types of majors that we have. So it's always good to know that you have help. It's always good to know that there's somebody who can help you out. And honestly, you know, we have faculty that attend these webinars, but they're not necessarily know that all the different resources that we have. So use us both. Use your faculty, use your teacher, use your instructor, and your librarian. Think of us as your team to help you get through. So citation help. I get so many questions. Oh, Anna, great question. Textbooks. Um, it depends. If you're if you're talking about just regular books, you can check those out for 21 days. If you are getting your books through interlibrary loan, if you go to their, their page, there is a lending link on how long you can have those. I actually don't know that off the top of my head, but check out the page and it does give you more detail on that. However, any of the other librarians that are in this webinar, give a shout out if you know the answer. Um, we have great, great resources for citation help. In fact, we offer workshops on how to use Zotero and EndNote and the various other different citation software that's out there. Our guides are really helpful. So this is just kind of a quick and dirty basic guide into getting into the, the three majors. So there's MLA, APA, Chicago Turabian, but we also cover additional citations as well. So this is kind of where you're gonna to wanna to start. We have basic videos, request a wrap session, intend and name one of the webinars. But also I too, I mentioned when you guys are doing a search using the library website. Always check out on that side about getting the citation. And like I said, you want to double check with them to make sure that they are correct. But a lot of the citations are provided. So, for instance, if you're looking at a book, it's going to look just like this. It's going to be a blue button that says cite this title. If you're looking at an article, it's going to look right there on the um, right hand side. It's going to be a button that says cite. If you're looking at an ebook, they tend to, be, tend to be right up at the top of the link. If you are looking at a database, like for instance, CQ Researcher, which I'll show you because it's one of my favorites, um, it says cite now right at the top. So there are citations provided, but it's also very important that you learn how to build them. And there's also citation machines out there that you can learn to use. But again, don't freak out because I'm a librarian, I've been doing this for years, and I still get confused with citations. So I'm always pestering John Wiswell, who is like the citation god. He teaches all the uh, webinars on how to do it. And he's super helpful. So just know that, you know, don't be afraid. Come call for help. We'll definitely um, walk you through the process. So I, I feel like I keep saying, we're here, use librarians, um, because yeah, it's our job. And especially with DE librarian, I love helping you guys out. So we have faculty services, which may not apply to most of you because you're, you're students, but uh, we do lots of cool stuff for faculty. Like we'll come to your class and we'll teach um, specifically about your class in the sense that here's all the resources that you can use for the special project. And here's the databases that would really work best with your class within databases. We can do webinars, we can do in person, um, lots of cool stuff for faculty. Now I do a separate uh, faculty resources webinar, so I won't go too much into it, but just know that you have special services and privileges just like the students. And the majority too, I, I find of DE students tend to be education students, so I put a link to the IMC just because it's awesome. And the education librarians here are amazing. And there's so many really cool resources. So if you ever were to take a trip to Boone, which we highly recommend that you do, you can access the Instructional Materials Center. So if you're an education major and you're wanting to build really cool uh, projects and ideas and stuff for your classes, you can come in here for free, use all of our cool loot, and then take it back to your class. My daughter loves pillaging this room. Um, she's not supposed to, but I, they kind of let me. 
but this is just a great resource that we have that's offered to you. So like I said, if you ever get that chance to come to campus, highly recommend it. So let me guys, let me take you back and do you have any questions so far? Because like I said, I have thrown a lot of the website at you, but I'm going to show you some other really cool things that we have that you might not be aware of. Okay, well, let me take you back to the main website of the library because I did show you the kind of cool distance education specifics. But again, you guys have access to the whole library. So, I mean, it's not any different than if you were a campus student. But I want to show you a couple of my absolute favorite databases. Now, um, we're all guilty of using Wikipedia. I love Wikipedia. Um, but Wikipedia is not an academic resource that yet is accepted yet. I think that there are a lot of faculty members that are kind of coming around saying, you know, Wikipedia is not so bad. I get a lot of great references when I use Wikipedia. But I would say nine times out of ten, you guys, quoting from Wikipedia and brain mass is not cool. It's not academic. It's not peer reviewed. It's not scholarly. Also, when you guys are doing internet searches, you have to be really careful because sites like .com, .net, they can be created by anybody. So there's not a lot of peer reviewed expert um, ness about those particular sites. If you were to get information from .edu, .gov, um, those are more legitimate resources. Uh, however, like I said, we do have quite a few database or uh, libguides and webinars about using Google. Uh, we actually use Google here. And before I even go into databases, you guys, if you were to click on our Google Scholar link, what we use with Google Scholar that's different from just going to regulargooglescholar.com is that we have set it up where Google Scholar will link to any articles that we actually have in our database. So you know what I told you earlier when you use Google Scholar and you find the perfect article and then it links you to this page where you spend $45 and they send you the PDF? If we have it, it will link you to, and for some reason it's not going, but it will link you to the article that we have in the database. So check it out. You're going to see the ones that we have access to on the right-hand side. So you can click on that. Oh, okay, so that one didn't work. Let me try it. You can click on this and it will link you to it. So again, if we have access to it, it will open it up for you. So if you are a diehard Google Scholar, you can still love it and use it, but use it from our site and save yourself the trouble. So again, Google Scholar. But Okay, so the article databases. So I was talking about Wikipedia, how much I love it. Um, not very scholarly. We have a database, if you click on C and scroll down to CQ Researcher, I call this one like my academic Wikipedia because it gives you the skinny on just about any topic you can think of. So say you're writing a comparison paper about, okay, this is Boone, everybody's all about legalizing marijuana. Not that you should or anything, I'm not saying <laughs> that, but it seems like that is the most popular paper for freshmen. So maybe you're trying to get information on legalization of marijuana. Man, I am getting myself in trouble. Okay, so it tells you everything you've ever wanted to know. Um, say that you want to talk about teen drug use. That's going to be the focus of your paper. So you can click on one of the related reports um, or Let's talk about the legalization of it, should it be. What's cool about CQ Research is just check it out. Okay, so already, here's my Cite Now button, so I can get the citation from this even before I start looking at it. You have an introduction, you get an overview, you get the background, the current situation. My favorite part about this is the pros and cons, because so many times you have to write that comparison paper, and you got your ideas, but you're not quite sure what the other side said. This will give you that. So here's your pros, here's your cons. Um, bibliography, yay, because you know you got instructors that are like, I want at least five to ten references, so you can get other references using this. You can do related reports to make it even more specific. And it, like I said, it's like Wikipedia. It tells you everything that you want to know, but you know that it's peer-reviewed, you know that it's scholarly, you know that it's not you know, a questionable site. It's just awesome. So I highly recommend in all of the classes that you have, we are not quite sure where to go or where to start, that I would, I would look here first, just kind of see what's out there and to give you the kind of the skinny on the different topics. Other super awesome databases that we have, as you can see, we have databases by type where we've lumped up statistics and data, or maybe you need free images, music, and video. So maybe you are working on a project where you need copyright protected, non-plagiarism, 
always cite, never, never not cite, but you can access all the information from these databases and use it within your projects and within your papers and you are protected. You are copied. This is free, like free range music. You are perfectly safe in using this. Um, and we've got sheet music. You can stream DVDs. You can stream um, vinyl that have been uploaded digitally. It's pretty awesome stuff. Um, images too are really important. Oh, in fact, our newest and, and most, like we're seriously thrilled about this database, it's Films on Demand. So it is like academic Netflix. You can see documentaries and movies, and a lot of your instructors use this site. They'll put a link to the movie within um, their As You Learn link. So all of this is really cool. Um, so you can watch a lot of documentaries and things like that for free, um, and it streams super well. Um, I, I tried this from home, and it actually didn't lag. So that was, I was always happy. That to me is like a good indicator. So jazz music library, you can download albums for seven days. It's just, like I said, we got some cool stuff. Um, other notable databases that you may not be aware of, we have access to ancestry.com. Now I'm kind of showing you the fluffy stuff because you guys are going to be already diving into the academic databases within your subjects. And I'll show you how to do that too. But these are, are not so used databases that we have access to that people just didn't know. So like I said, you can use Ancestry.com for free when you link in through us. Now, if you were to go to Google, type in Ancestry.com, they're going to ask for your credit card information. Don't do it. But here you can do a search on your census records. You can check out your family. You can use, you know, everything. It works just like you'd have a paid subscription, only it's free because you have access through it through the library. Another really awesome database that we have is called Mango. So if you were ever interested in learning another language for free, it's kind of set up like Rosetta Stone. So if you're used to looking at Rosetta Stone, but you don't want to pay Rosetta Stone prices, which are pretty crazy, you can log in, create your own account, or you can just do a quick start to kind of see what we have. So there's a ton of languages that you can access. So if you were to click on all languages, it gives you this huge list. My absolute favorite is pirate. So if you ever want to learn how to speak like a pirate, I highly recommend that you click on this and play with it. But as you can see, it's a very basic, not quite as in-depth as Rosetta Stone, but it literally is enough to get you going. Um, they also have a lot of cultural information about it, which is kind of cool. Um, my daughter loves to get on and play the Italian because she's always wanted to learn Italian. I don't know why we're not Italian, but it's a pretty amazing site. So it's a lot of fun. It's kind of playful, but you actually find that you, you get a lot out of it. Like I, I did the basic Italian and I'm pretty impressed with what I know. I can totally go to any Italian restaurant and order food in Italian and ask where the bathroom is, which to me is the most important stuff. But to not be too fluffy, the article databases by subjects, honestly, you guys, especially those of you in upper level, I would go to this before I would go do an app search. Not that I don't love app search, but app search only searches a small fraction of the databases that we subscribe to. So it doesn't actually give you everything that we have. When you go to subject, um, for instance, I was an anthropology major. What we've done is we have broken down all of our anthropology databases. Now, in research means it's going to be slightly more work involved because you're going to click on each one and do a search. But honestly, take the time to do that. And, and again, we can go into more detail with wrap sessions and other um, like library research basics and navigating the library website webinars that we do that shows you kind of how to do this. You also learn a lot about it if your instructor invites the librarian to your class. But always know, you know, we're here on your own time. So when you put in that wrap session, that's you come in with your list of things that you want to know. That's the best way to let us help you. So by going through these sites, um, again, they're very specific to your major. So you're gonna, you're not gonna get like that Google search where you get 63 million hits and only five of the hits were actually relevant to what you're looking for. It will be very specific. And if you need help on how to research on keyword searches and all that stuff, definitely contact us. Definitely check out our, our workshop page. Definitely request a wrap session because we it's there's a lot of information that would take way longer than my prescribed one hour DE introduction that we can go through. And again, we can do this on your time. So always just kind of keep that in the back of your mind. Other really cool things, um, we do a lot of events in the library if you ever come to Boone. Um, but some cool collections that you might not be aware of is that we've got an outstanding music library. And again, you have access to this as well. So you can get these books and the 
Check, you can use the databases. Um, we have, uh, okay, I gotta brag. We have probably the coolest special collection ever. Unfortunately, it's temporarily closed because we had a flood, but once it gets back open, you have, we are probably one of the few special collections that actually allow students to check things out. We have an amazing stock car racing, racing collection and just about everything you ever wanted to know about Appalachian culture, the area, the region, all kinds of stuff. So it's a pretty, you, you have a pretty amazing library at your fingertips and we're very friendly and very helpful and we want you to get the most out of your education and please use the library because once you guys graduate, you will be able to come to the library, but you won't have access to the databases and you won't be able to um, get stuff sent to you. So take advantage of the service while you're here. Um, like I said, if nothing else, get articles and books and check out season six of Dexter over the break so you can watch that for free, get a break and inspire you to go even further into your paper. Uh, although it, Dexter just scares me, doesn't really inspire me, but. We do have a lot of amazing things here that we can help with. And um, our tech center, oh gosh, I don't even want to get started. It's just crazy the amount of stuff we have. So that is my introduction.